We are back with a, another episode of the one-on-one podcast. Uh, I am joined again by my co-host, Kathy Baker. Kathy, welcome. Hey, Josh. How are you today? I'm good. I'm excited for this one uh, for a couple of reasons. It's definitely up my alley, and I think our good friend Ryan will be speaking a lot because it's uh, it's the reason Realty One Group has him on the payroll, basically, pretty other much. than the podcast. Yeah. Pretty, pretty, pretty much. <laughs> Uh, I'm excited about this too. And I'm excited. Previously, we were fortunate enough to have Jackie Tate join us. And I'm thrilled that she agreed to come back and talk about something that's very important to her too, and that she's built a pretty big part of her business around. And that's video. Video. So Jackie, welcome. We are so excited to have you back. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for joining us again. And I have a feeling this one could go longer than our normal runtime because there's so much to talk about. So let's, let's just dive right in. Um, Kind of run us through how video has helped you in the many, many, many businesses that you were involved in. (laughs) Um, All right. Good question. I want to tell you that video is something that we use for a lot of different purposes. Specifically, my husband and I have a YouTube channel called Empty Nester Life. That's really built around lifestyle. And then we bring our real estate experience into that. And so we've been able to create a lot of opportunities there. We also use video extensively for our just focused real estate business. Every listing gets a video uh, and we can talk about the differences of what we, how we choose what type of video to do with which listing. Mm -hmm. We do a market update monthly that we put out on YouTube. And then of course we populate it to everywhere. So we use video in multiple different ways, but I think it's one of the paramount things that you have to get involved with in today's marketing. Yeah, I think it's a non-negotiable at this point. I, I mean, it, it, especially in real estate. Um, I, you brought up something that I thought was interesting because yours and your husband's YouTube channel, you said, is more lifestyle. But I mm-hmm. uh, correct me if I'm wrong. I think that you are showing your personality, your personal life a little bit, which is probably very beneficial for your real estate business because you're showing who you are as a human being. Yes. And here's what I want to just kick off the gates for is who you are is who you are yeah. and how you look is how you look. And so and how I you know sound is how you sound and how you sound <laughs> is how you sound. Right. And I know that when you watch yourself back on video, sometimes you're like, Ooh, and it took my husband and I a little bit to say like, okay, it's fine. Just let it fly. Then there's certain things, you know, that will, there's certain things we edit out. But for the most part, we, you know, just have to say this is who we are and that's the foot that we put forward. And so people are either going to like it or they're not going to like you. Yeah. And so the benefit is, is that people who do like you are attracted to your video content and they're the ones who want to engage and interact with you more frequently. So by doing the lifestyle one, they get to know. And my husband's also a realtor as well. So they get to know us more personally and they can determine, Hey, I think I'd really like working with these people or maybe I wouldn't Yeah. even when we're just showing off our travels or what have you. But then the other thing that we do is we do highlight through this lifestyle video, how real estate affects our lifestyle. Mm-hmm. So for example, our own personal purchases or sales, will highlight those. We show people, you know, we have a vacation home that we use as a short-term rental when we're not in residence. So we show people how to do that and how to evaluate that situation and, and that type of thing. And then when we go on our travels, we always do a house hunting video, no matter what city we're in. And we've actually been able to create some great referral opportunities from that. So I want to ask, um, because I know, I mean, we can even like Ryan, we can even look at, so let's sidebar really quick. I still is nails on a chalkboard for me to watch these YouTube, these podcast videos that we create to hear my voice and see myself on camera, but I'm getting through it. But so I want to ask, and, and we, Ryan obviously has, you know, a full blown setup and it's, and it's wonderful. The quality is amazing. But for you and your husband, are you guys, do you have a crew with you? Like, are you using professional cameras? Because I know creating video content seems like a daunting task for a lot of people. So I will tell you that the way we started our channel was literally with our phones. And even when we started it, 
we didn't really have like the latest, greatest phone. Yeah. We just started with what we had. And from there, we have purchased different equipment. We've purchased high level cameras. And I will tell you that we have 100% just gone back to using our phones. Yeah. We do focus on getting the better quality. So like right now I've got an iPhone 13 Pro Max and that has done really well. The camera quality on that is fantastic. And so we're a big fan of it. I will say, so we don't have a crew that follows us around every once in a while. We might have somebody that we're with, like hold the camera and take our video uh, for us. One thing we have invested in is a gimbal mm -hmm. that works with the phone and um, wireless microphones. Yeah. I think audio is key when you're doing that. But I mean, I think we're all in on that kind of stuff for under a thousand dollars. Oh yeah, definitely. I think like when it comes to the gear, I, obviously for somebody like me who like does this like for a living, like it's, it's one thing, like it's the same when, you know, I watch films and I'm sure Josh is the same. Like I, I'm a very, like I'll overanalyze films to the point where like my fiance does not want to watch movies with me because <laughs> I'm talking about the ins and outs of it. Yeah. But it's, it's the same thing when it comes to like video. And when I talk to people in our company, to our agents and stuff, and they ask me about video and like that, it's a lot of the time to them, it's, oh man, they see my setups and they're like, I'm not going to do video because right. I'm not going to put all that money, all that time and investment in. But really like we're at a, we're at, we're in a day and age where literally like, yeah, your phone and a decent microphone that you could even get off of Amazon that you could just connect to your phone, like a small lavalier mic that you can connect to your phone and use that as your audio. Like that, that already brings your production level up tenfold. Yeah. And <clears throat> which is, that that is a, the perfect comment to like what I want to get to next, which Kathy, I think you will appreciate this. How, what's, what's your, your content schedule? Like, how are you, uh, are you posting once a week? Do you guys have a consistent following that is expecting your content every Wednesday or like, how, how does it work? So we just got to a place where we're starting we've we've hired an editor mm -hmm. because i just couldn't keep up on my own stuff anymore i love the editing process i think it's so much fun and that's just me personally and a lot of people hate it but i think it's a lot of fun but i finally said you know what? i've got to release this because i'm too busy doing my own thing so we've got an editor that we work with i send him the raw footage i give him the idea for the video and then we work back and forth he'll mm -hmm. put something together i'll watch it say hey do this do that and then my husband and i will oftentimes uh, record voiceovers but not necessarily always we try to get out once a week and sometimes it has to extend a little bit past that. So I do want to say that that is always the goal is to get out one piece of content per week. However, if you're doing content, I want you to hear this. Make that your goal, but don't get down on yourself if you're imperfect about it. Mm -hmm. Because we sometimes, I mean, like right now, we're uploading a video as we speak for our next one for Empty Nester Life. And it has been eight days since our last one. So by the time it processes and does all the things, if we get it out today, it's eight days. If we get it out tomorrow, it's nine days. But that's okay because we're still staying on track. We're not going, oh, we missed the seven days. So hands in the air, we're done. Right. But do you feel like the quality is better than the free? It, the quality of it is more important than the frequency? I find that you have to find a good balance of both. Okay. So don't get, so quality is super important in that. Make sure you have good audio quality. I will tell you, we did one before we got our um, mics that plugged into our phone. We did one at the Hoover Dam and the wind was horrible, yeah. but we kind of thought it was funny. And so we still went with it. Our editor kind of edited it together in a way that we thought was pretty funny. So we're like, yeah, let's go for it. It's our worst performing video because nobody wants to hear the wind. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. horrible. And so, you know, you, you kind of try some stuff, you throw it out there. OK, uh, in that situation, maybe we would have been better to not put that out and, and do another one. But that's the thing with video is if you're just creating consistently, you're going to have some wins. You're going to have some misses. That one, I think, has been out for 
nine months and it has maybe like 50, 60 views, but we have enough. I mean, we have several ones that have gone viral. I think our highest uh, hit was uh, 70. It's at 73,000 views right now. Something nice. like that. That's very so, nice. Yeah. I think, I think that, I think that's it. It's like you, you have to find a balance of pushing out quality content and a quantity of content because I mean, you live in a, it, the YouTube culture, the video culture, social media culture is like something will eventually hit, right? Like mm-hmm. you're, you, you post enough videos, something will stick. And if it's for better or for worse, at the end of the day, like you're getting clicks to your profile, you're getting people to notice you, especially with, you know, the, the home buyer. I mean, I feel like me and Josh are kind of in that, that demographic right now of like, um, we we consume a lot of video content right like um it, to, to me personally like when i see when i do like random dives just to see like kind of what our realtors are up to in terms of video and stuff like i've seen i've seen great ones i've seen bad ones but yep. it's it's the ones that like obviously will engage your viewer in the first couple seconds and i will say like not all the time not all the time is the content like amazingly edited or whatever. It was just kind of like, it had a funny quirk at the beginning or something that I could have mm-hmm. related to randomly. Like it, th- there is a balance, I think. And we try to do that here too. Like with, with the Realty One Group channel itself, we try to find a balance of quality content that we can push out. But at the same time, especially when it comes to social media, because you can push out stuff so quickly, like don't pass up that opportunity to just post something because you're like, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to shoot this. I don't want to, record this really quick and post it because it's not, it doesn't look amazing. It doesn't look quality. Like you get the content out there. Oh, it's <clears throat> like, I feel like I'd always, always give this guy a plug, but like Rob Spearman, he produces such great, simple videos and he does it very consistently. And that's, he's, that's a selfie that he's just holding his phone and recording himself for a minute and they are effective and his following loves it. And I mean, it's, it's, and it's so simple that probably takes him what Ryan 15, 20 minutes. Yeah. At most. Yeah. And obviously that's, you know, one example, but, and he has a particular, uh, personality and, uh, and he's great at it. So that's actually a question I want to ask Ryan and Jackie. Cause I know Ryan, you've had to work with this with me cause I'm not very comfortable on camera. <laughs> and so like, Jackie, how do you get out of your head or maybe you're just wired this way that you are, you're being recorded, you know, to, to put it simply. That's a great question. And I will tell you, excuse me, I was, I, I mean, I do professional speaking. I, when I was young, my whole background was in ballet. So I, I accredit my time on the stage as mm-hmm. a young child for not having a fear of that kind of thing now, but even having all of that, it's different in the camera. So if you can just imagine, don't, don't imagine like, Oh, I'm talking to this camera or I'm looking at my phone. Imagine that you're talking to somebody picture who you want to reach and put that person on the other side of the camera. Uh, One of the things too, that you'll notice is please, if you're doing selfie video or, you know, just kind of shooting, they call them, you know, the floating head videos. Don't look at yourself in the screen, look at where the camera, is at and then just imagine that person you want to see on the other side of the camera that's going to help you tremendously and then I heard about this wasn't even one of my people this was something I heard about on another podcast but they were talking about an escrow officer who knew she needed to start doing a video and doing kind of some escrow tips and things like that so what she did is she took her phone she wasn't even recording herself but she had it on where she could see like it was going to record her and she just put it on her desk as she was working through her day as she was on the phone and she would continuously glance down on it to where she sort of wired her brain to get used to seeing herself on that little screen so then when she started recording the video she had no hang up about it anymore smart idea you know a a couple of things um i think for our for our listeners, one thing is that I'm coming away from this. Don't use perfection as an excuse not to do it. Yeah, absolutely. And I think so many people get hung up on it's not perfect, so I can't do it. The other thing 
And I love the fact, and I, I'd love for you to speak to how do you find an editor? Is that is that you know cost prohibitive? Because here's my belief, and I've always done this. I've I've done I've had the opportunity to do a lot of things, and I trust Ryan, and I trust that Ryan is gonna do whatever he needs to do that Josh and I are going to not look completely foolish, right? <laughs> so I think if you invest in an editor or a producer or somebody that you trust, I don't feel like I have to look at it. I feel like I trust Ryan mm-hmm. that when it's released, I don't have to go, oh my gosh, I hope nothing in here is going to be humiliating. And I love the fact that you've invested. I'd rather people invest in an editor than in equipment. Yes, hundred so percent, Kathy. Everyone listening, hire Ryan to stay on. <laughs> I'll yeah. have my contact info below. <laughs> have your contact information, but, but does that make sense? Does that make sense? I'd rather you put it in that than, and, and don't get hung up on perfection. Let the editor, who that's their professional job, tell you this is what needs to go. Of course, you need to have, you know, you and your husband have that opportunity to add and and take away from that. But I love that you do that. I think that's the wisest thing I've heard. Yeah, and I have him. I started a YouTube channel. It is not consistent. I this If you want to look at this YouTube channel as how not to start a YouTube channel, <laughs> great. <laughs> but I've started one for my coaching business. And I'm sort of playing with putting a you know, day in the life of a realtor, telling a story of how I do my business, and then filtering in some different coaching videos in there as well. I haven't been consistent enough. And so finally, I I hired him. I said, hey, if I send you some of this day in the life stuff, will you edit it for me? And I will tell you that he's done a good job of it and it hasn't been perfect. In fact, one of them, it was like he kind of missed the mark. But guess what? It's content. It's out there. And I'm like, OK, you know what? Let's roll with it. It wasn't my vision, but it was still good video. Mm -hmm. So you have to let go, I think, sometimes of your expectation to get stuff out there and just, you know, just push through and and just do it to quote Nike. Yeah. I also think when, uh, Ryan, I think you know this better than anyone, um, when you are working with a especially video content, you're probably watching, rewatching a thousand times and then you're nitpicking it just like, you know, we're all our own harshest critic. And so it's to your point, Jackie, it's best to maybe just step back, realize like, okay, this, this works. This is, this is usable content. I'm going to, I'm going to post this. And if you're not a hundred percent on it, then do better the next week. You know what? Another thing I like to do, and this is, I think this speaks to my personality, but I do share this with you because I think it's been tremendously helpful is that I will put at the end of a lot of my videos, a little uh, bloopers. Yeah. Oh, clip. yeah. <laughs> and to me, it's my way of making fun of myself because I'm like, listen, I can make fun of me better than anyone else can make fun of me. Yeah. And so if I put that out there, it almost, to me, it takes a little bit of the, um, sting out of if somebody else. And I find that people actually respond to that. Well, it's, I've had people who like that more than the actual content. Yeah. It's, it's self-deprecation right. humor. It's, yeah. it's like, it's the ultimate. And like, I, I, we've talked about this, like some of my favorite videos are, you know, whatever these comedians or whatever that their video cuts at like the wrong time. It's kind of like the Sopranos ending. Like they purposely make the video cut, like when they're like mid sentence and it's, it's so organic and hilarious to me. And that's something that it's truly showing their personality. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I guess I have a question in terms of, are you finding that you're posting video content more than any other um, forms of content these days? Or are you still having actual hard, you know, photo posts or LinkedIn posts or, you know, so how, what are you thinking? So I will say that in terms of the content that I personally create, video is 100% at the top. However, if you were to look at our forward facing, especially for our real estate team, if you go onto the Team 323 real estate Facebook page or Instagram, you're going to see primarily 
photo, uh, but that's because I am smart enough to use the Realty One Group systems that are provided to me. So I have the um, core listing machine plugged into all my different things. I've got my rate, my agent Mm -hmm. profile linked into those different things. So if you go on there, you're going to see, hey, just listed, just sold. I've hired somebody else to do uh, posts on our social media. So they do a testimonial Tuesday where they'll go in and find a testimonial for one of the members of our team and post that every Tuesday. And so, and then of course our Facebook page is going to have a constant flow of, Hey, check out this house, check out that house because I'm using those systems. So I think it's important to have all the things, but you personally don't have to do all the things. You just have to be able to plug into someone who can. Um, so we've gone basically 20 minutes talking on a podcast about video content and we have not even mentioned the word TikTok. <laughs> I, I don't use it. I don't either. I, I, and that's why I don't I don't know how I've purposely not wanted to talk about it, but I feel like we would not be doing our viewers and listeners justice if we didn't. So anyone who has a TikTok, please jump in. <laughs> I have a TikTok. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> I have a TikTok, but I only play with it. Okay. I don't, it's not my consistent. I'm so into long form content mm-hmm. that for me, it's a, it's more of a struggle to do short form, but that's because that's the type of content I enjoy consuming. Sure. I enjoy watching a 20 minute vlog of people doing, you know, cooking dinner and taking their kids to wherever I, I watch um, called simple, good, simple living. And they're literally people who decided to like sell everything, move to Idaho. They built their own cabin. Awesome. They have, you know, they're doing homesteading. These are things I would never do. So I think I like watching yeah. somebody else do yeah. it. And I like their personalities. Totally. So that's the kind of content I like. So for me, shorts are hard, but I have done some TikTok stuff on um, playing around with it, with video and things like that. Here's what I would say is that I think you have to pick a horse and ride it. Mm-hmm. So if you're not like me, you're like, I hate long, long form content. I really like short form. Then focus on getting really good at Instagram, Instagram reels and TikTok, and then you can post those as shorts on YouTube as well. So you can get some traction out of those. But I think that don't try and force the square, what's the saying, the square peg in the round hole yeah. or whatever. Like, don't try and do that. If you are not about that TikTok thing, don't say to yourself, well, I got to get on TikTok because everybody's there. Like, right. Pick a horse and ride it. Oh, yeah. You definitely, I, need, love, I think you that's such it. sound advice. Yeah, you definitely need to lean into kind of like what you're what what you feel you're more comfortable with, especially because you're doing something that in in its like purest form is very unnatural. You're putting yourself out there for the entire world to see, mm-hmm. and whether and whether that's like professionally in your career or you're just doing it personally because you have like a another channel or you just want to show your lifestyle. Like, I feel like when I when I talk to realtors a lot, like. You, a lot of them is like, I don't want to get in front of the camera. I don't like how I look. I don't like how I sound. Like, I don't know how to do this. Like, again, all the things we talked about, just starting to push any kind of content out of there. If you feel like you're more comfortable doing something a little shorter because you watch a lot of short form content then lean into that. And then you can <laughs> gradually build out into it. I, I think the biggest thing is people are so afraid to get comfortable in front of a camera. And this is a lot of the times where I like to tell them like, you know, you, you've seen content where like, you might not even see the person, you might hear their voice. And I think leaning into, yeah, like leaning into voiceovers, like those those, those are huge (laughs) examples of content where you can still get your point across. You can take your time with it and discuss whatever you want. If you're a realtor talking about a neighborhood or these cool spots, or you're talking about a house that you have, like that you don't necessarily need to you know, have your face out there if you don't want to. I think it's just a matter of like getting your content out of there in a visual format. Yep. Um, I agree. And I think like if you were to look at our team uh, YouTube channel, it's Experience Flagstaff Real Estate on YouTube. And if you were to go to that, you're going to see that, yeah, we do some educational videos. We do some stuff with our, you know, kind of talking head type videos. But you're going to notice that for the most part, you're going to find property tours, sometimes with voiceover, sometimes not. And you're going to find that we, like I said, we do a monthly one minute market update. And we get a lot of traction from those. And especially where 
if I can just like put a big spotlight, like if you were going to take this episode and create a short, use this (laughs) where If you are doing video content for your listings, you will find that more people will hire you to sell your home. And I don't know what the latest statistic is on this. I know um, a couple of years ago when we created our listing presentation, it shows that listings that have video have something like 400% more views online. And yet only 9% of agents were using video for their listings. To me, that is out just, it's outrageous that you would not use video. And one of the things that we do is we, we like to say that we treat all of our, we're, we're one Lux certified. We do luxury homes, all that kind of thing, but we try to give the same service to a entry level condo that we do a large luxury home uh, in terms of making sure that we provide video, but there's so many different ways to create video that you don't have to hire the high level production videographer to do every single listing. And we don't some, you know, higher price points, we hire the right people. And then at certain price points, or if it's a home that we know is going to go so fast, we do different levels of video, but every listing gets a video. I don't think it could be put more simply. Um, I do video. Yeah. Do video. I, I like, I, I like just cut the camera there, but I, I like, I really, it, it that was actually, I, I obviously we're already over our runtime, but that was another thing Ryan and I stressed when we wanted to launch this podcast was it, we, it couldn't just be audio. Like it, that wasn't enough for, right. for, for what we, for the product that we're trying to produce. And, and it's, you know, adding that other dynamic to it is not only creating personas for me, Ryan, Kathy, everyone that we have on, but it's also, it, it's adding to the overall brand, which was our end goal. Yeah. You know, I think now it is so obvious after this second episode with Jackie, why she is a successful realtor, a successful speaker, successful author, um, coffee drinker, everything, um, video queen, everything. So Jackie, thank you again. We are, we're indeed proud to have you on the podcast and even more proud to have you as a member of the one family. So well, I'm, I love you being a member. Her. I yeah. love being a member of the one family. So thank you for having me. And I want to say too, y'all do a really good job with this podcast. So to kick back to Josh saying like, yes, it has to be video. You do a really good job because I mean, I watch your podcast. I stay tuned on it and it is great. I mean, obviously I know Kathy Baker at outside of the podcast, but Josh, like I never met you before. And I felt like I had a good knowledge of who you were. And I think that speaks to why as a real estate agent, you want to get out there in whatever way. So people have a level of familiarity with you. But y'all have done a really good job job. And I think you've done also a really good job of bringing on great guests. And that's not, that's not about me. It's about like looking back at the guests you've had in the past. I think you brought some really valuable insights that agents can use. And I think an agent can learn from that too, that if they wanted to do something, if you're not comfortable doing it, start bringing guests on, you know, or even if you don't want to be on camera, you could do a video of your lender. You could do a video of your title people. You can ask them questions and bring valuable content to your audience and thereby you're providing video without spending a lot of time on camera. So I think they can learn a lot just by watching this podcast. Well, thank you. We really, really, really appreciate it. Seriously. (laughs) Like that's, that's very nice. And we would love to have you back on like whenever, whenever you want, because this, this has been effortless and awesome. Thank you. Thanks, Jackie. Thank you, Jackie. Thank you. We thank you for joining us today on another episode of one-on-one, a Realty One Group podcast. We are powered by one.u and ask if you have suggestions, recommendations, or questions, please email learning at realtyonegroup.com. And remember, Pay close attention to the details, listen to understand, not respond, and always be a resource, not a sales pitch.